Hello. Emily, how is this recording if no one was here? Um, I think it's an automatic record mm -hmm. every time we join. Um, when we go through and we set up the Zoom meetings, you have the ability to automatically record as soon as people join. Okay. How do we feel that uh, the Sandbox DTRs and commentary have been going? I know, like, it's not time yet, but I feel like it's gotten a lot easier. Great. Yeah. Like, ha it's... Having those comments from the tag were, were awesome. Yep, it made it easy to, to just go through and review it, and then I could deep dive on a few portions of the project just to confirm some information for myself. Um, so I, I've been really enjoying join them but it, it's a it's a good good level of effort and we definitely appreciate it on the toc i think Bob, you're going to open the vote party in Slack at some point, right? I think you mentioned Yes, I was yesterday. just Yep, I was just waiting for us to complete things today and then I will start the the Slack threads. Awesome. Excellent. And uh, for those TOC members on the call, Bob will put it in the channel, but uh, cartography was also moved to a vote 
Um, that was one that we had previously discussed and we were waiting on some licensing clarification from staff before we could move it there. So that one is finally in the queue for voting. We got one more minute. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining at the half hour mark so the TOC could wrap up their sandbox application reviews from our previous meeting. Um, today we are getting an update on the leadership terms and contributor ladder. Um, I know we kind of rushed the group to provide us with some information on it, um, but it seems like uh, they've been having some meetings and some good direction setting. Um, Lynn, I know that you were at the last meeting on August 6th. Could you kind of talk us through where things are at? Because as I understand it, I think Karina is limited to chat only for right now. Yeah, I, I was actually really hope uh, Nikita would be here. Then I realized she is on vacation today, so uh, very unfortunate. So last time uh, we had five of us join the meeting. Uh, Rajesh was there, Leo was there, Ali was there. I don't know if they were on the call right now. So if you are, feel free to correct me if anything I said. Uh, 
I didn't remember correctly. So we kind of discuss uh, for uh, you know some of the thoughts uh, we're forming together for the tag. So one thing we talk about is how many coaches are reasonable for a tag. So we kind of landed on three coaches uh, a reasonable number, and we also kind of discuss uh, how many tag leads are a reasonable number because we've seen you know people have more tag leads. Maybe Maybe necessary or too late, too few tech leads. So we kind of think three, maybe also a good number with minimum two. Um, and also we kind of landed some idea for workgroup leads. So three is a good balance. Four would be a little bit too much. And uh, um, minimum two makes sense if we could. Um, we also had this interesting idea of um, workgroup liaison, kind of like a TA, TOC liaison for the tag, because we noticed some of the tag kind of having challenges by um, the, the work group and the tag are a little bit more dis, disassociated than what we would really like to be, because we heard some complaints from the tag leads about the work group going off doing their own thing and they don't have like enough visibility. Um, so we thought about this idea of work group liaison, uh, which we think is really interesting because the, you know, the TLC liaison kind of report concerns back to the general TLC regarding a tag. So um, that might be a good thing we can put into the governance. Um, and then the last um, we also discuss about tech chairs and leads, uh, employer balance, um, you know, what is the diversity requirements? So we kind of agree on an employer can't have more than 50% of the seats. If it's more than 50%, uh, we would uh, rather have the seats um, wait until the next person, whoever is eligible to run the election. Um, uh, we also discussed about nomination process. Um, so we kind of brainstorming on uh, should we do something similar to the TOC process where anybody can nominate, or should we limit the nomination folks to people who are already serving as a leader within the tag? So namely, these are the TOC liaison, the tag chairs, the work group leads, and the tag leads which I think most of us agree that makes sense because if you're not really doing any work in the tag, we almost don't want you to, you know, jump to a leader position. And we're trying to kind of um, eliminate the, uh, some of the famous star, you know, they may just put the, themselves forward and because they are famous, they get the leadership role, but not because they were already doing some work uh, being active in the tag. Um, let's see. Um, we also talk about the terms. I think we kind of discuss about two year term may be good. And then uh, at one year, we just rotate, you know, half in the oldest member. Um, um, that's about it. <laughs> Nothing finalized, but uh, there's a lot of consensus around, you know, how we want to form the leaders and how we want to nominate and then have them seated and uh, about the terms. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just have, um, I guess, a couple of questions. So, so we've we've kind of um, been socializing this idea um, a little bit within tag security, and we're getting a lot of pushback about both having a a, a cap on the number of tech leads as well as um, having those term limits for tech leads. I think we've had a lot of long-serving tech leads who've been doing great work for the group who worry that, you know, that they're going to be pushed out by by this policy. Um, so I guess I have two questions. Are these more like guidelines that the tags can like pick which guidelines make sense for them? Or is it like more like rules? And also, um, yeah, like, how, I, don't know, I don't know, is there is the number of tech leads like a cap or how can we like work with work, work with that? So I want to I want to answer the second part of your question, which was more around the terms for tech leads, because um, I, I think that concern is valid. Um, if there are no limits on the quantity of technical leads and the 
term lengths are intended to re-engage in a discussion around if an individual is interested in continuing to serve or if the community would like to have another technical lead. I think that is a healthy practice because if you're doing good work and you're still active, you're naturally more inclined to be re-nominated and re-elected and continue in that position. But it gives us a checkpoint as well as the technical lead, a, a personal checkpoint of whether or not they want to continue that engagement in that capacity or if they want to opt out at a, at a nice closure. Um, for myself, I know that within tag security, many of the technical leads exist in kind of perpetuity and retain their same permissions in the repo, which we don't want that to happen, particularly if a tech lead becomes more involved in different projects in the ecosystem or moves out of their particular role for whatever reasons. So we want to ensure that we're protecting both the, the repos and the community of the tags while still providing good opportunities to, to check in, see how people are doing, provide opportunities for rotation and emeritus status. Um, I don't have an answer to the other one, but I will turn it over to Bob who has his hand raised. Yeah, I was actually sort of going to say a similar point. Like in Kubernetes, we uh, had the terms or th thinking about terms as a checkpoint. Um, one of the things we found is a lot of people don't even think about potentially stepping down or they don't think about potentially, you know, trying to, you know, mentor or guide someone to potentially be a future lead unless there is this kind of fit, like opportunity for them to step down. And this has come up with some of the leads that have essentially, you know, held the position for years and it's just something they haven't, thought about even when they get like really busy and can't necessarily you know work well with the group anymore they just don't think about you know stepping down and it does create that sort of it opens the door for that dialogue and that has been very healthy yeah, Other... I... go ahead lynn I thought Ricardo was asking about, uh, you know, whether there is a limit of the terms. The reason we try not to put a limit is because uh, some of the tags don't necessarily have enough people to do the work, to willing to be the lead. So we don't want to be too exclusive. And also, if you can go through another round of uh, election and when, you know, that's a health sign of a community you know in favor of you so that so we think it's still healthy as long as there are terms in place yeah i i agree i was just uh, asking <laughs> for confirming because uh, yeah. i think it also answers part of marina's question uh, about the possibility of people reapplying basically indefinitely for new terms yep kathy yeah i think i agree with this terms uh, thing uh, I think that will make the community healthy and also encourage more contributors to to contribute more and become the lead. Um, I have a question. When we talk about this lead, these terms and the election, does it only apply to leads or apply to chairs too? Uh, I think quite, uh, maybe Lin can provide more clarification on that. I'm sorry, I was looking at the chat from Bob. Is the question about clarification on the leads or on the chair? So the terms or the, you know, the terms, right? Is that like, does that apply only to the leads, working group leads or tech leads or it apply to both or to the tech oh, yeah. chairs? That's a great question. We were thinking for all of them because it's healthy to do the election and recycle leads if we could. Um, as people have been kind of chatting about in the chat as well. So we were thinking uh, for all of them, certainly there is uh, the question we haven't had the answer is who's going to run the election. Uh, the tax in talking to some of the tax, um, like the leaders from the tax security team, for example, you know, the people, the leaders doesn't feel comfortable around the election themselves, right? Because they could they could put themselves as as a lead, nominate self-nomination. So 
we haven't really discussed who would be responsible for run the uh, run the election and who are the voters. I don't think we had time to discuss about that because that's also important. And I've heard some pushback uh, from some of the leads in the tag that uh, they don't necessarily want like the TOC to be voters. The reason is the TOC are not directly engaging with the tag. So think about the TOC be the voters for what group leads, does it make sense? So we have to think about that maybe for co-chairs because co-chairs interact more with the TOC, but the work group leads not necessarily. So we'll have to think about that too. Um. So when it comes to votes, uh, this is actually developed as a like LFX project a while ago. Um, there's electo, which essentially allows a vote to happen just through some GitHub configs. And it does the whole, you know, honest concordant voting. Um, we've been using it for the Kubernetes like steering elections and other various elections there. And just basically you define a list of like GitHub handles that are your your voters and you know, people can PR in their sort of like bios and things like that. So it's how working you, well. So how do you feel would doing the vote in public? Because the reason I'm asking is, I don't think we do TOC votes uh, for, you know, sitting the next um, TOC member in public, right? My understanding is the no the vote is kind of uh, anonymous and you just only get the results. Um, so uh, currently the, like, you know, the list of, of voters, it's done essentially through sieves. So it's it's a similar system to Electo. It's just the old like email method of doing it. So it, it's probably best to have the staff facilitate the election process, um, given that they're already they already do it for the TOC and for several of the other um, elected positions within CNCF. Um, the question I would have more around is the nomination process itself. I think it's important that individuals serving in a technical leadership role within a tag or even within a working group are represented of their community members and their peers. So they should receive those nominations accordingly. Um, I think part of that is important to have the co-chairs of that tag also endorse those individuals um, mm -hmm. because they're the ones that are primarily going to be interacting with them. Uh, as far as tag chairs themselves go, I've seen a few different models. I know Tag Security has tried a few things, um, both for community nominees for co-chairship as well as co-chair nominees for co-chairship. So identifying individuals with skills that augment gaps in the current tag leadership, for example, that may have been elevated from a community member, or in some cases, they've brought them in from outside of CNCF to increase awareness and exposure beyond um, this immediate foundation. So there's there's a few different options there. Kathy? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm checking. I think there's a mention say the TOC should not you know, vote. I think if we have the TOC Lianza for the tag and also TOC Lianza for the uh, working group tech lead, I think, you know, the TOC can't have a vote there. Otherwise, yeah, because it's the same thing, right? And also for the tech chair, I think, you know, we should have the TOC nominate because we have engagement with the TOC tech chairs. So I think overall, I'm, I'm happy to see where this is progressing. It sounds like there's been some good conversations and some good kind of discussion around why this, why not that. Um, I think we're getting closer to potentially having a proposal. Um, is there any questions or concerns so far with how this group is moving and, and some of the the indications of what their recommendations are going to look like to the DOC? I think I have one, which is uh, when, when do we when would we start 
Um, for example, if we introduce terms, what does that mean? We run elections across all tags from, from the moment we release this, or how does that work? Or we count backwards to when people are introduced as leads or chairs? I, I'm okay having it as a recommendation from staff for what they think would be the best timeline to kick that off and get that started and how we should stagger it. I don't know that it really makes that much of a difference for us to make that determination as part of this group, if um, staff are going to be running the actual election process itself. But it's more for for the current uh, leads and chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, like, do we trigger the process of potentially renewing um, people for the terms right now? Or do we actually go back to see when people started this role and see how that complies with the definition of the terms we are coming up with? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I think we should have some recommendation because I envisioned that question would be asked by different tags. Um, my idea would be it would be recommended maybe like at the beginning of the year or maybe after the TOC are seated, if we want a TOC to vote it on the, uh, the tech co-chairs, um, then uh, we can have the 50% of the oldest up for election, right? So based on that, you would know what's the rough number, whether it's one or two um, co-chairs or tech lead or work group lead up for election. And then the rest of them would be up for election the year after. Um, certainly some of the tag um, may want to adopt it earlier because some of the tag may have an uh, emergency with which they are they are okay to adopt earlier. But I think it's good for us to provide a general recommendation of, look, maybe March is a good time to do this every year. And considering the CNCF staff's availability, hopefully, you know, we'll be finished with the TOC election so staff may have a little bit more availability I don't know I'm just thinking maybe pick a light um, month for the staff as well do you think if we put um, such rule like that uh, Ricardo would that address your concerns in a proposal uh, I, I think I think so it's just okay. for consistency because uh, yeah. yeah there will be many cases like this and the, and the other comment I had in, oh, uh, was on the um, affiliation. There was this comment about 50% affiliation. So maybe we can try uh, also to look if we have uh, the same rule applied across all cases, like the chairs, the leads, but maybe even the TOC liaisons and then the work group leads as well. Maybe we should apply this um, across uh, all items. Because we sometimes we get comments uh, about this kind of thing. So if we apply a rule across, then it's clear for everyone, and we document it. Yeah, yeah. You, you you're talking about the voters, right? Who can be the voters? No, no. Like the the actual um, people serving in these roles. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Understood. Understood. This was the explanation you're mentioning before that uh, no single. Uh, organization should have more than 50% of these seats yeah. Yeah. and maybe we can apply across like leads and chairs for tax but also working groups and then even the TOC liaisons for each of the tax uh, we can try to get diversity there as well yeah that's a great idea I agree yeah uh, what about voters uh, do you guys feel anybody uh, the existing leads uh, within the tag plus the TOC liaison should be the voters? Or maybe all the TOC can be the voters too if we want to, but I don't know if everybody wants to do the vote. My concern is the TOC is already engaged in a lot of voting activities. Yeah. <laughs> um, I certainly don't think that it is fair or appropriate that a TOC vote be a blocker for a tag's ability to work within their group on a particular project it is especially if we're talking about um determining a working group lead or one of two working group leads we should not be the blocker for that that's we're not going to be that involved we're not going to be that down into the weeds within the individual tank to ensure that the vote actually carries substantial weight so i think having us 
participate could be beneficial, show support, show that, that we are engaged, but it should not hold up the tag from being able to execute on projects within their scope. When yeah. it comes to maybe technical leads, I can kind of understand that. For chairs, absolutely the TOC needs to be involved. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, Actually, I, I think, you know, we do not need for the whole TOC to be voters for, you know, for, for a tag for working group leads, but the TOC Biaza, who is working closely with yeah. that working group or, yeah, for the tag, yeah, should be the working member. Yeah, that okay. sounds good. Um, so what do you feel about the next step? I almost feel, even though this is not perfect, it would actually be really good to write a really rough uh, proposal. And uh, maybe we should socialize uh, within the TOC and also the tag le leaders today. Um, and, uh, you know, and then we can keep changing them if uh, some of them are not perfect, like uh, we can change it on an annual basis, because I hate to have this uh, discussion go another year without anything, you know, finalized or implemented. So let's do this. I think getting a rough draft written up for how this would work, it doesn't need to be intensely detailed, it just needs to cover the key points, kind of how the meeting notes are organized um, from these uh, sessions. So getting something written up that kind of answers some of the questions here provides a clear foundation and framework for how this is going to work. Um, and then probably opening it up to public comment to ask additional clarifying questions so that we can kind of refine that procedure. Um, and then we can add it to the offsite or to another private TOC meeting for further discussion. I do know that we have a, um, an upcoming discussion on tags um, that's been scheduled and this. This has a lot of overlap with some of the, the topics there. So um, let's do that. Let's try to get a draft proposal. Um, we'll keep that in mind based off of this conversation for that next meeting. Um, and then we'll go from there. At the very least, I'd like to have this kind of wrapped up um, by the end of Keep Gone, oh, clear yeah. direction. Yeah, it's like the number one concern from the text. So, so yeah, since Nikita is not here, I'm going to volunteer myself. <laughs> I can't volunteer you, her. Man. So I will start a draft and uh, I will socialize internally within the TOC first uh, before we send out for public comments. So I will try to wrap it up uh, in the next week or so <laughs> while I still remember everything. Um, make sure you include the individuals that have been involved in the working group. So it's um, they're oh, also yeah. participating in that development and it's not entirely on you. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns on this topic? Okay. Anything additional, announcements, things of that nature? Uh, TOC members on the call, please remember to cast your votes. Bob will be doing a vote party in our Slack channel, so pay attention to that. Um, and with that, I will let everyone go with six minutes left in their day. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Later, all.